Um, so yes, um, I wanted to mention it, uh, that uh, Jennifer and Lisa will be hosting uh, most of the program. And so far we've uh, recovered from our first uh, bump. I Let's hope there are no more. And I'm just gonna quickly mention uh, the other J4I members who are instrumental to this team tonight. Uh, we have with us Lori Joe, Bruce Tate, and Evan Thornton. So I speak with you tonight as a descendant of European origin, a mom, a grandmother, a partner and educator living on unceded Algonquin territory here in Ottawa. In spite of settler colonialism's ongoing violence, the original peoples of this territory have always maintained their ties to the land and continue to be actively involved in every facet of modern life for the sake of their generations to come. So thank you to the Algonquin Nation. For those of you who may not have had uh, a chance to check out J4IW's website, you might like to know that it was born from Project of Heart, an Indian residential school commemoration project that seeks to educate non-Indigenous peoples about the true history of Canada and that history's enduring impact on all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples in Canada. Justice for Indigenous Women is a registered nonprofit formed by a group of Indigenous and non-Indigenous supporters with a vision to promote justice for Indigenous women and girls. Affirming the strength of Inuit, Métis, and First Nations peoples, our work is grounded in the values of listening and honoring, knowledge and education, collaboration and justice. So welcome, bienvenue, kwe, ngasigit. And now I'd like to hand the evening's proceedings over to Lisa Howell. Thank you so much, Sylvia. I'm so pleased to be here with all of you. As Sylvia said, my name is Lisa Howell and I've been part of Justice for Indigenous Women since 2014 in its beginnings. Um, I am a Canadian of European descent, living and working on the beautiful unceded and unsurrendered territories of, uh, Algon of the Algonquin Nation where I am now. Um, I've also been an elementary school teacher for years. I'm a part-time professor at the University of Ottawa and I'm working towards completing my PhD in education as well. But Thank you, merci, Nakmarik, miigwech for all of you being here tonight. This is an important event. There are uh, women working hard on the ground in Miti Matalik right now, trying to reclaim uh, their Inuit traditional ways of pregnancy, birthing, and child rearing. So our purpose tonight is not only to raise awareness of what's going on on the ground, but also to raise funds to support this work. All of the money that we raise tonight goes directly to support the education and training of Inuit midwives in Miti Matalik. By educating more midwives, women will have the choice to stay home in their communities to give birth rather than be flown away. Many women have to travel as far as Ottawa to give birth. This is over 3,000 kilometers away from their homes, their families, their older children, and their communities. It would be the equivalent of a woman from Ottawa traveling to Jamaica to give birth. Miti Matalik, which has always been known as Miti Matalik, was called Pond Inlet by Europeans. The name Miti Matalik means the place where the landing place is. It is a great hope of many in the community that more of their babies will land in this place. We are so thrilled and happy to say that four of the women who are leading this work are with us this evening. A warm and humongous welcome to Regili Utuva, Dinah Arak, Tessa Lockhead, 
and Jatita Murkosak. They are joining us on the uh, calling into Zoom uh, all the way from Miti Matalik and Ikaluit Nunavut. And we're so happy to have you here. Before our evening really gets underway, I'll just let you know uh, how the evening will unfold. So first, Rajali will gift us with an opening prayer. And then Mo Clark, who is a, a multidisciplinary two-spirit Métis artist, uh, will gift us with an opening song. After the song, Rajali and Dinah will speak and have time to answer a few questions. Following that, Tessa and Jatita will speak. And then we'll move into our film portion of the evening, where we've got two short films to show you. One uh, about efforts in the community uh, to bring back traditional childhood uh, preschool uh, education and child rearing, and the other in which Regilly speaks about midwifery and the importance of having it in the community. So before the opening prayer, I'll just take a moment and introduce uh, our first two speakers. So it's my honor to introduce Regilly Utuva. She is a cultural and linguistic expert in the community of Miti Matalik. She is a traditional midwife and has supported many women to help give birth over many years. Regili also spent many years as a cultural, lead, a cultural educator in the high school in Miti Matalik. She is a community leader and leads by incredible example. Dinah Arak is the manager of the Early Years Program in Miti Matalik. She facilitates programming and support for many participants of the program geared towards infant and toddler early childhood education practice and also supports families at home. Dinah is also a community leader and has been for many years since she was a youth leader in a variety of community programs growing up in Miti Matalik. Without further ado, I'll now invite Reggie Lee to open our event with a prayer. Can you hear us? Yes, great. It's great. Yeah. Pasa <laughs> Thank you so much, Rajali. It's now my honor to introduce Mo Clark, 
who, as I said before, is a multidisciplinary, two-spirited Métis artist. Mo is also an honored member of Justice for Indigenous Women's Governing Circle. Welcome, Mo, and thank you so much for being with us. Hey, hey, Nakumik. Thank you, Lisa. Um, so beautiful to hear that welcoming uh, from Lisa and Sylvia and Rejali. Um, I'm so excited. I watched the videos already and it was just so heartwarming and inspiring to really see education and midwifery practices being owned and uh, taken on by uh, members of the community. Tansé Nitsigasen Mo Clark, Ekwa Nigamo Pieseo, Nitotsin Otoskwanek, Magani Wigan Jojage, Nya Oma Apitao Ekbosi Santa Stoaya Kiino Askiino, Ekwa Otepemseo Akekwa Munyao. Um, so I'm introducing myself. I'm uh, Metis to Spirit, originally from Treaty 7, Otoskwanek at the elbow, where those beautiful Bow River and Elbow Rivers meet from the glaciers. And I'm currently residing in unceded Mohawk Ganyangehaga territory in Jojage, otherwise known as Montreal. And uh, I want to sing a song just to open up this space and to also acknowledge and honor that we are just on the backside of the full moon that we had over the last couple days and just honoring all the dream space um, and this winter time that we're currently in. In uh, Nehiawe, when one of, uh, one of my ancestral languages that I'm learning, Plains Cree, they say that winter is pipon. And that means that there is energy moving across the horizon, that great white energy, and it's descending and it's sinking and it's feeding the land. And I really like this because it's like a time where we can wrap ourselves up in the blankets of dreams, of being close with family, of sharing our stories, sharing our teachings and sharing our gifts. And I feel like that's what tonight is all about. And so I wanted to um, offer a song and also just show this is the drum that I haven't yet birthed. I made it, but um, I'm looking at and exploring kind of how can we be midwives or mid people for um, our tools as well and taking back and reclaiming um, those practices and processes as two-spirit people. Um, so that process of bringing life into the world and being, um, being a drum carrier is really important for me. And that's a way I connect to that heartbeat that is inside my body and the heartbeat that is in the land, our Mother Earth, and then the heartbeat in all of creation and all of our relations. Um, and so thinking about the northern door, Kiwit Nook, that beautiful place where the going home wind reminds us where we're located, thinking of, uh, thinking of the four leggeds of the beautiful polar bears, of all those water beings. Uh, my little sister sent me a video of uh, eating beluga today, and so I'm just reminded of being up in the north and reminded of uh, traveling on Air Inuit. Uh, after visiting Umuriak and uh, Kujarapik up in Nunavik and seeing the beautiful image of a cast that a woman had done of her pregnant belly and that cast was painted with Inuktitut and it was a way of honoring that creation and that process. So I'm going to sing a song. It comes from Northwest Territories, same place as uh, Mary Wilson, who's here with us tonight. Tanse, hi Mary. And uh, it's from uh, Kira Don Colson, and it's a Dene healing song. So it's a song of the North, and it's a song that was received in a dream. And when Kira Don Colson, who's a young Dene uh, artist and woman, when she shared it with her auntie, her auntie said, ah, my girl, that's an old song. And uh, I'm so glad that you remembered that song and that you've received that song. And so the practices and everything shared tonight just in line with that process of dreaming the memories of our ancestors.
Thank you so much, Mo. It's just what a beautiful way to start our evening off with Regalie's words and uh, and that. Thank you so very much. Um, so we're now um, so excited and so honored to uh, have Regalie here and Dinah here with us. So they are calling in. Um, so you will hear their voices and uh, in just a moment I'll, I'll share a screen so that you can see their beautiful faces uh, while they speak. So uh, Regalie will speak for a little while and then we'll be able to take some questions. So please, please, please feel free to uh, put any questions or anything you'd like to share or you're wondering in our question and answer box at any time. And uh, our wonderful uh, question moderator, Bruce, uh, is, is going through them. So Regalie and uh, Dinah, if you're there, uh, that would be wonderful to hear from you. Thank you. <clears throat> you might need to unmute yourself again, Regalie and Dinah. You are unmuted. Hello, we are on the line. Um, Wonderful. So uh, Dinah, did Regalie want to uh, say a few words about what's been happening in the community? Okan <laughs> Um, first of all, I would like to say, um, during when we have pregnant women's day at the earlier um, I talk about, um, first trimester of pregnancy and second trimester and third trimester. And also, um, when you have sugary stuff with you, I mean, when you're eating sugary stuff too much, that you get swollen and salt. Sorry about that. When you have too much too much salt, um, you get swollen hand and swollen feet and swollen body, and also kind of what to do. Um, I'm going to be helping Dinah. Um, Regally, says that she has been talking to people who are pregnant and what it's like to be pregnant. Not the same as not being pregnant. What changes you go through when you're pregnant? Oh, 
He has been talking to his um, pregnant women what it's like to expect when you're pregnant and you go through when you're pregnant. Not the same as not being pregnant. Depends on what she has been told from her parents or when she got pregnant. Um, she birthed five. Yep. She gave birth five times, and um, um, she was she tries to pass on what she has been told. Got pregnant, but um, she she goes through and passing that on to pregnant women. Nurses have been 
testing or they would give uh, prenatal to pregnant or people. She likes her, but um, she supports the innies more between birth or um, rather, I mean, she should, there should be more innies. Um, that were able to be, uh, yeah, she supports the, what has been uh, taught to us by Southerners, um, but she prefers the Inuit way of giving birth. There's a slightly different way of things, Southern way and the Inuit way. Traditional way. Another <laughs> Um, she's in her late 60s and not too long from now she'll be entering older age and um, she really wants to keep practice, keep this practice um, being a midwife the traditional way and she wants to learn more and pass on what she has learned. Um, she really would like to gain back the traditional way. Um, she wants to pass on what she has learned. Um, when a pregnant woman is in labor, um, what to expect and how she has to um, when you when you're in labor. Um, you have to know how you have to position yourself. And if she can be included by, supported more by people, and uh, we as Inuit, we don't impose on what we know to other people. Um, it would be great that if we can be, if she can be supported more in this area, um, we can pass it on to young, younger generation. In the um, it has been for a while that Inuit they have been sent to sent down to Iqaluit or Ottawa when they're In their six, 36, 36 weeks, and 
if she's in her 36 weeks, she would have to be away from her family for four weeks or more. And she doesn't support that. Oh, you should not have to run that. Only Carver at that Simagama, who we are to meet them, who we are to at that Simagama, Kimaka Simagama, and I'm going to only let the Simakota out of the city. That's why maybe a seven years to find Anna Vizahona Mata. Now, Mangi to me, Billy Repair at that Simagama, only Carver at that Simagama, or Matia Ilaham, Anna at that Simagama, Livy there have been times that um, she has been told stories like um, if a young girl has been left with, with her younger siblings while the mother is away, but the, the young girls have been through like maybe abuse while the, the, the mother is away for that long. Just like this. <laughs> pregnant women down to where the hospital is or where there is real midwife. We um, have not talked about disadvantages that we have gone through. We would still complain much about it and we, we don't talk about it too much. The dis dis disadvantages because I guess. Yeah. Um, Diana. Uh, so, so, so. Uh, she wants to stress that, uh, and she has been stressing it that. Pregnancy is not illness. Um, maybe because we don't voice enough of our concerns, maybe that's why the um, the government or the system has been misusing us. <laughs> Very grateful that uh, she's able to say what she has been thinking. We're really grateful to hear from from her, um, and I I think that we do have a, a couple of questions uh, from the people listening. So if that's okay, uh, uh, Dinah, we'll um, I'll ask Bruce uh, if there's any any questions for Regali. Hi there. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Lisa, and just uh, wonderful for me as one of the uh, participants and listeners. Uh, question we have so far is, what is the Inuit way of giving birth, understanding that may vary from community to community? And along those lines, what are the Inuit birthing traditions that midwives are keen to preserve and bring back to birthing in the communities in the north. Can you say that again? Um, I didn't catch some of the words. 
Absolutely. So one of the questions is, what are birthing traditions in the community that midwives are keen to bring back to the community that have been removed through colonial uh, colonial settler? What, what are the traditions that are specific or unique to Inuit birthing traditions that you seek to bring back to the community? Um, I myself did, uh, probably can answer this question and uh, that um, she has, the midwife traditional midwifery has been quite so um, has not been included at all. They have been most pregnant women have been sent down um, sent out completely and uh, we were to say to a pregnant woman for the pregnant woman to stay stay home and not to be sent out and we have been told that um, she might die and there may be complications during childbirth uh, Using scare tactics, I think. If I translated that, <coughs> even if I don't answer or translate it properly, <coughs> sorry. Bruce here again. Thank you so much. I do have one other question. And the question is, uh, is Reja Lee the only one who is working as a midwife in the area? Um, are there other midwives? And why do you need to be able to train new Inuit women to become midwives? Are there not enough? So that's another question from the chat. Thank you. Um, I'll let her answer. And um, but before that, I'm going to say that um, all the pregnant pregnant women have been sent out, and traditional midwife has been not being practiced in community. Um, 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 and she has she's not working as a midwife. She was doing it without getting paid. We have been told that by the nurses, there's no midwife, so they send the pregnant women down, all the pregnant women 
are sent down to uh, the country or Ottawa. And why don't they ask the public or uh, the community if there's midwives in the community? Thank you. Thank you both so much. That's the, the two questions that I have at this point. Um, please feel free to add any more to the uh, to the chat and back over to you, uh, Lisa. Thank you so much, Bruce, and uh, to our participants as well for those uh, questions. Um, I've just found out that um, we also had uh, Jatita there as well. Uh, so there was a last minute change and uh, Jatita joined Regali and, and Dinah. So she, you've already heard uh, Jatita speak a little bit, um, but I'll introduce her and Tessa formally now. And Tessa will also be joining us on the line. So um, Jatita Murkosak is the co-director of Proverick Preschool. She's been involved with the preschool since its inception in 2016 as the Nunavut Arctic College cultural educator. Jatita has been part of the preschool's program as well and is now the chair of the Nunavut Coalition of the District Education Authority. Jatita has been a huge advocate for wellness in Miti Matalik for many years. And Tessa Lockhead is the co-director and co-founder of Pervert Pro Preschool and assists with the Preschool Society, which oversees the Early Years Program and the Preschool Program. Tessa is an educator and helps to administer both programs, although she now lives in Iqaluit. So thank you so much for being on the line with us. And uh, I'll ask you to, to now, uh, speak about what you've been doing in the community. Thank you, can you hear, this is Tessa, can you hear me? I can hear you very well, Tessa. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, on behalf of the Pehovic Preschool Society, we would really like to thank um, your organization, Justice for Indigenous Women, this is a real, beautiful sharing that's taking place. And a big thank you to Sylvia, Lisa, Mo for that beautiful opening song. And Jen and Evan and Lori and Bruce for um, all of your work on this. So I just really wanted to thank you for this opportunity. Um, so yes, I'm calling from Iqaluit. I, I, uh, it's been a total honor working with, as you can hear, Jatita, Diana and Regali for many years. Uh, the I moved to I'm originally from Ottawa and I moved to Pond Inlet um, maybe 15 years ago now and was living there as an educator for 10 years and Karen Nutahak who's not on the call uh, she's she used to be the co-director of the preschool program um, we worked together to build a preschool program in the community and then uh, it it, as a, or it was focused initially on early childhood education. And as the society grew and as, you know, really true empowerment grew and focused towards early childhood education in the community, um, we had always talked about, you know, the big dream. We do have a big dream. It's, the, it's called the Center of Excellence for 
early childhood education and family wellness in Pond Inlet. And we have a dream to build a brand new building that encompasses the preschool program, this early years program, uh, training room so we can continue to train other daycares with the preschool model that we developed in Pond Inlet, the IQ Montessori module model, as well as um, a room for the daycare in, in this building, a wet room so women and children can come and scrape seal skins in a wet room type environment, a woodworking shop, rooms and offices for elders, for people to be able to share and, and be present um, lang with language so they're available for counseling. We have lots of big ideas for this uh, Center of Excellence for Early Childhood Education in Pond Inlet. And it's a real honor to be listening to Regali and Jatita and Dinah share all the things that are happening in Pond Inlet and how they continue to be such uh, fierce advocates for women, women's rights, and their true magic and ability to birth children and they, the, their right to be able to do so as they need to. Um, and it's incredible that Pond and Let has regularly this resource in the community. And, and uh, it, it's an honor to be working with her and, and hearing how we can continue to support early childhood education in the community for infants, toddlers, and preschoolers. And also now um, with this project too, and with your help, uh, we're very appreciative that you're able to further support this initiative and in ensuring that regularly would have more opportunity to hold uh, sharing circles with women in Pond Inlet and to open the dialogue around midwifery and traditional midwifery in the community. So thank you to you all for your support. Well, we're just really honored that uh, that we can uh, we can be part of it, Tessa. So thank you for for telling us a little bit more about what's going on. Um, I'm wondering, I know Jatita was speaking earlier, but I'm wondering if uh, you, Jatita, has anything that you would like to share with us. Yes, um, I have six children. I, I was sent down to Iqali. My first one, since at the time we were told that we have to be in Iqali for our first one and the uh, second one. After that, you can stay in your own community. So I was I was sent down to Iqali for my first one. I was very young at the time, and um, I was I was there maybe a couple of months. Left my husband for two months. I was waiting for to have my first one. And my husband wasn't there while having our first child, and I was to, I was able to live with that. And um, looking back, if I were to stay in Pond, in that there were maybe quite a few midwives at the time, and um, with my and I had my th three. Three boys he not here in our community and there was midwife at the time and I was able to have my three of them three of my children here in our community and I had two c-sections which were done in the hospital and I feel they should be sent down like Regula said, that um, pregnancy is not illness. It's natural. I just wanted to add that. And I have been present maybe to five of my relatives who wanted me to be present when they were giving birth. And it's very natural thing to do. 
and if this was more practiced in our communities, and if there's a place where they can uh, give birth, or if they want to do it at home, and that can be shared between families, that would be great. Our dream come true, come true right there. Thank you. Thank you, Jatita. I think um, a lot of us on this call um, have had the privilege to stay at home in our community when we give birth or when our partner um, is giving birth. And, and the idea of having to leave your home and everything you know in your culture um, to, to birth a, a child into the world is, is uh, really, really hard to to imagine. And um, that's why we're so honored just really to help to support in this small way. Um, I'm wondering, Tessa, if, you know, with working with the preschool, you work with children who are, I guess, two or three years old and up. And I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about that importance of like the connection um, from birth, to, uh, a pregnancy birth, the child rearing at home, and then um, in in the way that uh, you're bringing it to the community, if you wouldn't mind saying a few words about that, just about that connection. Yes, um, the IQ the IQ piece of what's happening in Pine Inlet is a part of the preschool program. This IQ Montessori philosophy. But then when we have um, Inuinik, that's something that I'd, I'd rather the women speak to. But with regard to the IQ Montessori way that we started in Pond was essentially the big picture is decolonizing education. So taking the power of education out of the hands of the teacher, of the instructor, of the person coming in with a certain quote unquote set of knowledge and placing that power into the hands of each child. And in the preschool program, that's what we aim towards so that we children can choose what they learn when they enter the preschool space. Um, they dictate their own education and how they spend their afternoon. There isn't 10 minutes per subject like in traditional uh, educational settings. It is an open-ended three-hour uh, moment in an early childhood education center. And then children move around the room as they please and engage with, that, with the materials as they please. And in the context of the earlier center, when we have children and like infants and toddlers that come into the space, the same philosophy applies that it's their space to engage in, in how they wish and we have certain materials available to the children and um, and a lot of it too also applies to parents you know certain certain knowledge they might be seeking or they might be wanting from um, the, the staff so we have community members that are wanting support and needing support and um, we have a, an incredible staff in Pond Inlet that provides support where it's needed, how it's needed, and when it's needed, so that it's initiated by the people that are ready to engage or want to engage with regularly, Diana, Jatita, the staff in Pond Inlet, and, and how they wish to engage. And it's, that's a really important piece in terms of decolonizing education, decolonizing health. You know, you when you want something, it, it's up to the person to ask for help or, or to initiate that engagement and not the other way around. So that's a really important piece of how we engage in Pond Inlet. Thank you, Tessa, for that. Um, I'm just going to check with Bruce now uh, to see if we've got any any questions before we move along here. Thanks very much, uh, Lisa. We do have one more question, and I'm going to apologize in advance for what I'm sure is going to be the incorrect pronunciation of a community. 
And the question is, are you in touch with the birthing center in Puvirnatuk? Can that be a model as an example for your own work? So once again, it's, are you in touch with the birthing center in Puvirnatuk? And can that model be an example for your own effort? Thanks, Lisa. So I'm not sure if, if one of you can uh, can speak to that. And, and I'm sorry, uh, Lisa, it's Bruce here. And I am going to add uh, also add a comment that I'm going to drop into the chat a little bit later, how people can ask questions following the event. So if there's no, uh, if there's further questions or somebody wants to pursue a question, you'll be able to uh, uh, ask it after the event as well. And we'll be able to, to loop back to you with uh, an answer or a connection with somebody who can provide an answer. Thanks again, Lisa. Thanks, Bruce. So I'll just check in with our, our uh, wonderful friends up north. I believe Regley is going to answer that. I'm sorry. Can you hear us? Yep, we can hear you now. Uh, Regley will say a few words. She's hoping that you understand her view. 
Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Rajali, for that. Um, and I think that as we as we watch the videos now, we'll be able to understand more um, about you know some of the the ways uh, that Rajali is speaking about in terms of uh, traditional ways that Inuit women uh, uh, birth. Um, and also uh, child rearing. So um, did Regali have something else um, to say? Um, she doesn't have any more to say, but um, she's welcoming any comments or questions. I um, am wondering if I can ask a question. It's Jennifer here. I'm one of the members of J4IW and I'm uh, using my unmute privilege to ask a question. I was interested in what was said earlier about Regilly not being paid for her work as a midwife. And I am wondering if that is because she is not considered by Southerner, Southerners to have the proper uh, credentials. Is that the reason why? Um, the last part you said, um, the Inuit, if they don't have paper, uh, People who have come from the south and work up here don't see the Inuit um, but they, we're not being used. We don't want to be used. They see us as savages, I think. We are not being recognized. Right. Thank you for explaining that. It's unfair. Thanks, Jennifer. It is the way of life. I, I don't want to interrupt, um, but I, I'm just wondering um, if now might be a good time to, to show the films uh, and then we can have, uh, we'll have lots of time for, for more uh, discussion and questions after. And I know that Bruce will keep on monitoring the Q&A. So um, please feel free to, to put your questions or comments there. Um, we'll show two films tonight. Our first film is, um, is 10 minutes long and it's called Building the Heart of the Child. Uh, and I think through the images, um, you'll, you'll really get a sense of, of the community that, um, that our guests are, are speaking to us from tonight. So um, thanks, Jen, for playing that. And uh, here we go. Oh, gosh. All right, everyone, give me a second to uh, get this loaded. As you probably noticed, um, it took me a minute to uh, figure out how to show the pictures of our guests. So this is, um, <laughs> I will do my best. And uh, let's all hope that one day um, soon we could, you know, gather together in a space again um, and yes. see each other. And uh, and uh, wouldn't that be lovely to to have our friends from the north here one day as well? Oops. Okay.
Sorry, I do have it here, but my computer is a little bit freezy. Inoshitamana I was just seeing some notes in the chat that people can't see. So um, I just wanted to stop and I will start again. And maybe I will try not to put it um, on full screen this time. Inoshitamana <laughs> Isaac <laughs> Children are important for me because they are our future. Give them love and security. Be inclusive with them. Communicate with them. Listen to them. They are our future. Um, and if they are our future, um, raise them right.
we started going to the DEA, um, wanting a classroom, mm -hmm. um, telling them our idea of starting a Montessori-based program. People from outside might say it's a Montessori program implemented in Pond Inlet and in Inuit community, but we're turning it around. Actually, it's old, old knowledge here in Nunavut and Pond Inlet, and that is what we're reflecting in the preschool. It's pouring positive um, outcomes. You know, Pivovik is known as a place to grow. That's the yeah. meaning of the word, it's a place to grow. And not only are the children growing, you know, anyone involved with this preschool program has been growing too. Ever since our preschool started, we have, um, we've been getting so much uh, positive feedback from parents. The students that, um, that were in preschool, when they go to kindergarten, they're advanced. Kids in grade kindergarten, grade one, are at a critical stage where they learn from hands-on. Some of us forget that um, we cannot only speak it and they'll learn it. They need to touch things and they need to feel things in order for their brains to remember. Inungwina has developed over, you know, thousands of years of Inuit practice based on uh, what they have come to know as, as uh, effective ways of uh, not just child rearing, but, you know, child development, education. Inungwina is really about putting in those proper attitudes, building the heart of a child. It's a pedagogy. It is the way that Inuit trained children, but it's also the way um, that educators should be delivering programs to children. People like um, structure, good structure. We wouldn't have survived all those years, thousands of years, if we didn't have good foundation in unpredictable environments. Even before the baby or the infant is born, you start from there. I was just really in awe by how independent everyone was. Like, um, I noticed that a lot of children didn't ask first before they just did something. And um, I feel like with a lot of children in my life, they need a lot of reassurance. Like, can I do this? Can I do that? Can you help me with this? But it wasn't the case today. And I was just so amazed. Uh, I've never really seen that before. So just seeing how independent all the children were and uh, the children would do their individual activity and then they would go bring it back and someone would take it right away. And it was just like, there was always movement going on, but it was always organized. You know, we're used to seeing a certain kind of education of one person being in charge and other ones, you know, listening to that and doing as instructed. Uh, and so when you reverse that, when you actually put the power of education into each individual child's hands to see that and then they rise to that trust and they do operate quite well in an environment where there are so many resources that they can access themselves and put them back. And, Organized chaos is a good way of putting it, but when you surrender that power to children, it is quite amazing to see. Like, And that's decolonizing education at the heart of it, allowing that power into the hands of each child. Many funding organizations should be supporting this initiative. This is something that we greatly need all over our territory. Uh, it's so important to have culturally relevant programming and materials and Philip Big Preschool is proving that it's possible and I just really think that many funding organizations should really in invest in this because it's so important for ourselves and for our future. <laughs> Uh, 
tamat puninga tu kisi tu tu kisi mati tau batang nak balik tidak tu. Ada yang gitu yang mata. Siapa tak sahaja yang itu mungkin nak hari ini akan nak komiti mati. We have been wearing somebody else's clothing for too long. That's why we're uncomfortable. It's time we put on our own, be comfortable in our own skin, um, using our way of life. It, that's suitable for this community, for this, for Nunavut, for the Arctic. Regain our way of life. Be who you are. Okay, everyone, thank you for your patience as I navigated that. Um, my name is Jennifer King, and I perhaps should have introduced myself a little earlier, given that you've uh, had quite a bit of me throughout the evening. I am uh, blessed to be a part of Justice for Indigenous Women. Um, I'm an Ishtabe of mixed descent. My family comes from the Wisoxing First Nation, and I will be, I guess, your host for the second half of the evening. We are now going to move into a film, actually, uh, I should say footage uh, from Chickweed Arts, which is a uh, creative studio in the North, uh, in an interview with Regali. So we had a little bit of Regali over the line today. Now we're going to be able to uh, see her speak through the footage in this film, which was graciously um, given to us to use for this event. Uh, we have edited it ourselves. Our colleague, Lisa Howell, who you have seen so far, she did the editing for us. Um, and we are gonna play that now. It's about 20 minutes long. And again, it's me putting the film on the screen for you. So uh, bear with me here. Let me check the chat to see. Uh, if there's any complaints about my last performance, no, you're all very gracious. That's wonderful. Um, let me let me do this. There is no sound at this point, so if you're not hearing anything, you're not missing anything. Regularly, out of our young, the man of my daughter, long, my team, my daughter, my daughter, long, Kisha and the Arctic baby, Kanegian, in your neck, young, a part of me. Kalona hung it to me in your house in my living year, young, nineteen fifty-three. Then, uh, Sana Yiga. Okay, <laughs> ma Nadine Rossi Magaki, illness succeeds Yangaro, 
Construction. <laughs> so, <laughs> Tamani 
Tana <laughs> Pina soa rossi pinga se ovarone ti sama unga te arano tauna ne kiti. Kina ko peko ya ko tiki ya ro ki mengo ta ane se ti ko ro ta ko te mana o ka se mang mata te mana pina soa ko ya ko se kara ranga arla ko te ya ko ko te. Aka. First year ko ko hanga ta se ora ko jiko peko ya re ko se maya. Ong ne suksi ye ong ina mengo arla ko te cha la ko te. Tayman <laughs> Illness I <laughs>
Well, I think that was just beautiful. And um, I have to apologize because in my uh, fear that I wouldn't be able to figure out the video, I forgot the most my most important job, which was to remind all of you that uh, the chat is open, that you could drop your questions in there if anything came to mind after watching the film. Uh, so I hope you did see the note from our um, chat moderator, Bruce, saying, uh, and also Lisa saying, uh, please drop your questions in there. Um, I'm not seeing any at the moment, but I also wanted to, to just note that um, you know, even as I am sitting here feeling embarrassed about not knowing how to work Zoom, I was also thinking about how, you know, two years into the pandemic, we are all getting more and more comfortable with this technology, this video technology. Um, at the same time, our guests have had to join and sit on phone for two hours now and not to be able to see any of our faces or to see the, the films. And so I really want to thank them very much for sticking with us and also to acknowledge that this is an equity issue as well, this access to uh, reliable internet and to technology. And I think that we would all have really loved to see their faces. Um, as I am not seeing any questions in the chat, I would like to ask our guests, um, Rajali, Jatita, Tessa, Dina, if there's anything that you would like to say uh, as we come to the close of our, of our evening. Um, I have two children myself, and I was lucky enough to have a midwife. I had my second child at home, and um, listening to Regilly speak, you know, it it really breaks my heart that the traditional ways and uh, indigenous knowledge in general has come to a point where we have to do this work of letting our own people know that our knowledge and our ways are safe and that our traditional ways of giving birth are safe. And I just, um, I'm grateful for the opportunity to bring this down to our Southern audience and to hope that we can use some of our uh, privilege that we enjoy down here to, to support your dream. So, uh, Guests, Jatita, Dina, Regili, Tessa, is there anything that you would like to, to say at this point? Can you hear us? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, I'll interpret for her. Um, Reggie is just really grateful that she was able to see her piece, and um, I think you saw her photo in the film, uh, what you had to say in that film. Mm -hmm. Yes, she's a lovely speaker, um, and I really enjoyed seeing the chance to see her expressions and the, the way she communicates with her hands as well. And, and thank you for sharing that video footage with us. As I know, there is still hope on your end to put together um, a fuller length piece with that. And so again, our appreciation for allowing us to share this little taste with the group. I personally would uh, really like to gain back knowledge and uh, share it with younger generations and, uh, instead of sending them down uh, with costly free um, medical services. Um, it would be greatly appreciated if this can be practiced again in, in the community. Absolutely, and that's that's our hope too, that in um, a small way, we can contribute to that dream. With that, I see um, that Sylvia has put her uh, video on, which I think is the modern equivalent of like, you know, the 
the hook where they pull you off the they pull you off the stage. I think that is my cue to turn it over to Sylvia, who is going to do our uh, our formal thanks and our closing remarks for the evening. Some of you will have seen uh, Bruce letting you know in the chat that we will be following up in the coming days with some action pieces for folks to learn more, to take action. You've all been incredibly generous with your um, donation to join tonight. And there are also some other actions that you can take in support of the dream uh, that our guests have shared with us. And we will be sending those to you by email. So Sylvia, please, please take it away. Well, Jennifer, I think the first thing you have to know is that I would never rush you off the stage ever. <laughs> you did a remarkable job. Thank you to both you and Lisa for doing such a great job. So uh, in summing up this evening's event, I too want to thank Reg Regili, Dinah and Jatita for joining us from Matalik and Tessa from Michalowit. Uh, what an honor it was for us to hear from you. It, it really was. Uh, and not only just navigating the technological difficulties of connecting from the North, but also taking the time away that you did from your families just to be with us. Um, I also want to thank all you participants who gave so generously of your time and your financial resources to come together. Uh, again, uh, I don't think you can be thanked enough for that. Um, and just learning how to become part of the solution for the Inuit families in Mitamatalik who want to stay at home while giving birth and of course the midwives who are keen to bring back their traditional birthing practices for the health and well-being of their loved ones. I also want to give a huge thanks, absolutely huge thanks to the Public Service Alliance of Canada's Social Justice Fund for their very generous contribution to this initiative. So I'm going to repeat a truth now that is spoken often by a friend and a mentor to so many of us, Dr. Cindy Blackstock. She has, says, has said, and time and time again, that it's great to learn the truth about an injustice and it's really wonderful to feel empathy and genuine concern for those who are discriminated against in our country by not having access to services that the majority of us take for granted but feelings don't change anything, only taking action will. So I hope that you will take the time to check out the learning and action document that Lisa has put up on the chat. The resources you see there are meant to share and tell others what you've learned. So we urge you to contact our political leaders and those who are actually in positions of authority to make the necessary changes. We've provided a simple, template, uh, a sample for your writing a letter to either the Prime Minister or to the Prime Minister and your M Member of Parliament. So there are two sample letters there. And remember that postage costs nothing. So uh, you can communicate without having to pay anything. Knowledge and action equals change. And the midwives of Metamatalik uh, are requesting that change. Um, if you didn't have a chance to open the learning and action document now, uh, don't worry because we'll be sending the resources by email in a few days. So, Chimi Gwech, Merci, Nakurik, thank you for your support and good night to everyone. Bye for now. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.